I'm, what I'm conscious of is I don't want to do, I don't want to be predictable to myself. I record it a lot. I don't think I've yet got into retrade territory. Now, there are obviously a limit to the number of sweet and logical tunes that one can find. And I think what I tend to do is um, throw in, in what seems to me to be a natural way, elements of discord, funny time signatures, uh, just to, to provide the difference, to provide the edge. There's often, a, in, in my songs as well, a lot of, uh, of contrast where there's a sweet bit of lyrics, a sweet bit of lyric, I'll then juxtapose that with particularly hard or discordant music and vice versa, just to get attention going in the song. Um, this is, of course, not, again, normal rock music work. It's meant to be an easily eaten pill rock music. Uh, I believe it's potentially more than that. I think one of the magical things about the song, or the pop song particularly, is it doesn't just have to be boy meets girl. You can slide in some quite strange ideas and some strange comments as well. For instance, there's an old song of mine which is cool and which is about Port and Dan, the uh, research establishment in Wiltshire. And uh, it's a funny idea for a pop song, but pop song it is. It's just the, I used to drive past on coming back home from London and uh, it kind of broods on the skyline and the strange stuff goes on in there. And it's bang in the middle of the English countryside and uh, it's something that's ignored virtually. It's, I wrote it at a time particularly when, you know, naturally I'm concerned about, you know, the nuclear, the whole nuclear questions. And it seemed to me that you know, one had forgotten about the chemical and biological end of things. And we ought occasionally just to say, look, this exists. It's horrible. I mean, up until now, I've released at least a record a year with new material. And I haven't done that for a couple of years now. So I've obviously been taking stock of myself to a certain extent, my function within rock music, what kind of role I can perform, and also, actually what subject matter still interests me. And uh, I mean, the bulk of the songs that I'm now writing continue things that have uh, interested to the point of obsession, they've interested me to the point of obsession over the years. Uh, mainly these are sex and time. And uh, I've, at the same time, I've tried to pull back from just being deliberately obtuse and, for, and making things difficult. But I'm still trying to write pop songs, you know, I don't want to, I mean, when I start talking like this, I talk and, you know, I jabber away a bit and the words come flooding out. And I know in the moment that I'm saying them that all this is absolutely meaningless, you know, my job, what I do, is I write songs. The reason that I write songs is that I think I can express something in the course of three and a half, four minutes, which means a great deal to me about, say, about sex, about time, about society, the individual, what have you, and I can bang that into a song and it means something. The moment I start spouting away like this, it's, it's exactly the opposite. You know, the whole reason for writing songs is to avoid talking because I can't organise my thoughts. So that I'm continuing to do, in effect, and I've done, the conscious effort that I'm making is to try, try and produce songs which, have a, which can be taken as utterly facile. If you want to take them as facile, they're pop songs. If you want to look at them in a more serious way, because I look at them in a serious way, you know, I'm not just messing around for four and a half months recording and two years of writing. I'm not just doing it for the money or the fame. I'm doing it because it's important to me and I care about it. So if you want to look deeper in the songs, there's something there.